to this series about compilers and programming languages. And today we're going to talk a little bit about parsing and we're going to use uh, Yak, which is a, a standard parser for bottom-up parsing. And we're going to use that in OCaml. But before I start here, let's take a look at an overview of a compiler. So a standard compiler, as we know, consists of a front-end an analysis, uh, the optimizer and back-end typically. And we're going to look now at the front end. So if you haven't checked out, check out my other video on, on Lexing, which is taking the input source and then generating a sequence of tokens. And we will also construct and work with the Lexer today because then we have the parser of it, which is taking apart the, the tokens and constructing in then ASTs. Uh, and today we're not going to construct AST, but we will use the parser and then the semantic actions uh, within the parsers to directly evaluate the result. So let's jump directly into some uh, working code. We will start by using the lexer that we constructed in the previous video. Just as a reminder, the lexer file is, is defining a function as a rule. And here we call it token, which will tokenize the whole thing. We, the first part here is eating white space, and then we create tokens for add and mal. And then we also construct integers where by looking at uh, digital numbers. And we also have the end of, end of file. We are going to add a few more things. We want to have something for handling parentheses. So we want to have a parenthesis, and that you can construct by doing just like this. What we want to construct here is some things called parentheses. We can just call it L paren. We should then construct a left parenthesis. Uh, we can do the same thing with the right parenthesis. That is basically about it. We don't want to do so much more work with the lexer. Instead, we want to construct the parser. And the parser will be in a separate file. And to, for the lexer to be able to reach the file, we need to open it up. So we open parser. And in our previous video, we constructed a separate file for the, for the tokens. We don't have to do that now because in the parser, there is a special syntax to construct the tokens. And then the, the parser generator will automatically construct the data constructor for, for that. So we just write open parser. And this means that we need to have a file called parser.mly. So let's construct that. And this is the YAC, yet another compiler compiler, which is a very common parser generator syntax that is used in C. For example, you have the GNU compiler, it's called Bison. And this is then OCaml YAC. And I will, in the next video, show you a little bit more a newer version it's called Men here. But now let's just get familiar with the classic OCaml YAC. First thing to define here are the tokens. We can call this first token in like this. So we have an integer token, and this means that it will store a value int. This is where we will store it. So it's the same thing as, as, as a data constructor, basically, with one extra value. And then we have the tokens for add and mal. We can just write it on the same line. We have L paren, our parens for right and left parentheses. And then we have end of file. Then we need to state what is the start production in this file. Let's call the start production that we were going to use main. So we mark that with this start. And we also need to define what is the return type because the parser is parsing and then returning something. We are going to now to just return an integer. Then we write type and then int main. We will return from main, we'll return an integer value. Then this is important. This means that we are separating now the first part of the file from the second part, and the second part contains all the productions. I will not go through how grammars work. I have different other videos for talking about context for grammars. But the nice thing here is that you, that you can basically just write down the context-free grammar directly and then run it. So let's write the first production. So you write with the colon. This is the non-terminal main. We state that it's an expression. So it starts with an expression and then it ends with an end of file. So this is the non-terminal. So it basically says that first comes an expression and then end of file. And then comes the semantic action. 
stating that we will just return the expression. And this is uh, Jack's uh, standard way of doing $1, meaning the first terminal or non-terminal here. So we will return the value from this expr. But expr is a non-terminal, or we haven't defined it yet, so we can define that. And it's defined here. So notice that the order doesn't matter. So we have now the non-terminal expr. And we say that expr can be an expr, and then add, and then term. Give the pre precedence, we have a kind of a ladder of productions. And by doing that, we, we give the correct precedence. So take a look at my other videos for checking out how you actually define this grammar. But now let's just define this. We have this expression, and then an add, and then a term. Then we create a semantic action. And here we just write like this. And this means that we'll take this expression here and this expression, which is $3, and just add them together. The parser will parse this and get the return value here, which will be an integer, and then add it together with this other integer. So we are computing the result directly. We cannot do this normally. In, in generally, in compilers, we will generate an abstract syntax tree and then interpret it or compile it. But now we just compute the value directly, just for demonstration purpose. And then we have the term. And then we just return the value. And then we have to write the term. And the term will handle multiplication. So then we write term mal. And then we need to have another non-terminal. Uh, non we say that it's the factor $1 multiplied by $3, which will compute the multiplication. If it's not a term, it's a factor. And then we just return. And then finally, we have the factor. And the factor, what can that be? It can be an integer. And if it's an integer, we just return the value. Or we should also be able to handle parentheses so, it, so that you give the explicit precedence. And you just write L paren expression and write paren. So this means that this will recursively go up to this, to the expression here. We just return $2. Okay, this is the the file for defining the, the parser. We have the lexer here where we open the parser. So now we just have to write the main file. Just write main.ml. Let's just write the main function. Main equals. We want to do lexing here. Lex buff. We again use this lexing, which is the library that I showed in the previous video. Uh, instead of doing it from a, a string, let's do the directly from the standard input is, is that. And then you use this from channel, and then you write from which channel standard in. And here you can, of course, specify another channel it could be a file. So you're reading from a file directly. Well, let's use just standard input. That's the lex lexer. So then we get the lex buffer, which will be the state of the lexer. Then we want to do the computer result. Let's just call the result for res. And then we call the parser main. So now, parser.main, parser is the function, main is the function in the parser that we generated. Why, why called main? Well, if you look at the parser file here, MLY, we constructed this, said that this the entry point was main. So when this domain specific language, the YAC file will be compiled to an OCaml file, it will generate a function called main. And this is what we call here. We call that parser.main. And that file takes as input the lexer token. So remember that token is the function also generated from the lexer. So it takes the high order function token as input and then the lex buff that we just defined over here. What to do now? We have the result, which is an integer. And why is it an integer? Well, it's because the parser returned this integer here from computing the result. So we can just print it. Print f and then write result colon and then just print it out and then res. Okay, that's it. And then we can compile it. OCaml build and then uh, main dot native. We have just compiled it and it works. Let's say that we want to compute the following. Uh, we write echo and then say one plus two. And then we pipe that into our new program, main native. And that looks good. So let's do something else. 
let's do it like this. So now it should check have the correct precedence here. So it should do two multiplied by four before it do plus one. So it should be nine and it works. But if we put parentheses around here, it should first compute this one plus three, one plus two becomes three times four is 12. Yes, it works as well. So we have a complete parser and a small calculator which supports multiplication and addition and it can also support uh, parentheses and precedence. So in the next video I will introduce uh, men here which got some other nice features and also show you how you can write this grammar that we have here in a bit simpler forms. You don't have to give the precedence by show giving different non-terminals. There are some direct support in men here and also in Okam and Yak. So stay tuned and check out my next video. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.